Introduction here. He's only had an hour of sleep. Yeah, so. an hour of sleep. <laughs> straight uh, from on, Hawaii. Straight from on a red eye from Hawaii. Yeah. And uh, originally, we're in Nashville today again. Originally from Nashville, Tennessee. NFL football player Connor McDermott. Welcome to the show. Couple in. Thank you for having me. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for doing it, and especially uh, knowing that you didn't have shit for sleep last night, and <laughs> and uh, yeah, you're. Like you said, you're a big boy, and you need you need a lot of rest. Uh, I know how to make it happen. Though. Yeah, no, you're good. <laughs> but no, appreciate it, man. And uh, you're originally from Nashville, Tennessee. Um, just to give people a visual, you're an offensive tackle. You're six eight, and you're listed at three oh five. That's uh, that's generous. Yeah, I, I, I was gonna say that's. <laughs> Three oh five. I thought you were gonna say that was heavy, but then you're kind of leaning towards like you're you're bigger than that. I, I, yeah, I, I, like I get the feeling you weigh more than three oh five. I mean, it fluctuates. Off season, I drop down about three hundred, three oh five. Yeah, but playing after weight. Hawaii, I'm pro- playing weight though. Yeah. I'm probably three fifteen. Three fifteen. Yeah. Okay. Three, three I, twenty at most. That sounds that sounds fair, man. You're twenty seven years old, originally from Nashville. Uh, you were drafted by the New England Patriots in 17? Yes. Is that right? We had a little bit of – we didn't know which one's correct. We're, all right. You went to UCLA. Oh, yeah. Bruins, baby. And you, you were second team, Pac-12, in 15 or 16? I don't remember. I had, I had 15. He had 16. I had so. 16 written down. Uh – you have to look Don't it up. Don't you have Google? That's yeah, a, I mean, we well, do, but we I had, we that's where I got it. Was I can hit the head a lot. I, I, I was going to say, yeah, we'll, <laughs> and we'll talk about that later, yeah. too. Yeah, we'll go with that. Well, I'm, I might have a let's picture go with 50, on my Let's Instagram. go with 16 I'm, so I'm you're going, right, because you're the boss. Yeah. Well, well, you're looking up your own Wikipedia. 15, 15? I was all-conference team. Oh, okay. okay. I remember I posted that picture. I thought I was cool. Yeah, you got a tattoo there. I had to say it was a tattoo because, like, <laughs> not to get sad and all, but when I like three friends passed away in college, oh. like in the same month, oh, uh. year year after year, three years in a row, and I would always write their na- initials on my arm. Uh-huh. And going out to the field, the arrest first couple of times would always give me shit and be like, "You can't have that on your arms." I'd be like, well, "Fuck you." Yeah. And then after that, the ref started like being cool and be like, "That's a tattoo, right?" I'm like, "Of course it is. Of course it is." Yeah. I got you. Okay. So for your buddies, all right. So all three of those friends were friends at UCLA. Uh, one of them, the first one was uh, Nick Pasquale, still very close to his family. Yeah, in uh, San Clemente, California. Yeah, and uh, that was like my sophomore year. He was, uh, lived across from me, one of my best friends at UCLA. Mm-hmm. And then the next year was uh, Grant Womack, one of my good buddies, growing up from Nashville. And then the next year was my uh, really close friends, Robert Birch. Uh, who grew up right next to me, pre- went to school with him pre-first through 12th grade. Mm. Yeah. We're not going to hound on that. We've all lost friends. Yeah, I, don't, I, don't, I don't mean to. No, it's, no, it, no, it's no, no, no. That was a, what, that was a cool story. No, I, I, I appreciate it. Uh, we didn't mean to bring it up. What I want to talk about, though. Podcasting is you can like edit it and stuff, too. Exactly. Like, no, make, no, absolutely. Make, make it sound just like smooth and flowing. It absolutely yeah, does. I got, no, I you get good. Hey, it. dude, go. Because this is, this, is this is about you. I want to know what it's like. When you were coming out of high school, how many colleges were recruiting you? Dude, I had none. None? I won well, one basketball was my main sport. I was skin and bones. Uh, I mean, I wish it was a video I could I'll show you a picture, but basketball was the main sport. I thought I was always going to play basketball. That was my first love, and I always loved football. I mean, you grow up in the South, you're playing football, especially when you're my size, even though I was skin and bones. Yeah. I started tackling fifth grade, and then when I got to high school, I just wanted to focus on basketball and just do me. But my basketball coach, Ricky Bowers, one of my biggest mentors in my life, wouldn't be where I am without him. He was also the football coach and the athletic director, and... Twisted your arm a little bit, didn't he? Oh, there was no way I was not yeah. playing football and playing basketball. Yeah. He was like, and if you play basketball, it's gonna if you play football, it's gonna toughen you up for basketball, which was true. Yeah. And then I played AU ball with a bunch of guys that went and played at Kentucky, like Alex, Alex Poitras, who's in the league right now, and uh some other big D one school guys and but the offers just never came for me. I got Belmont, Lipscomb, 
and I got some talks from like Davidson and some other smaller schools. And then that summer before my senior year, I went to like every single football camp you could think of, Nebraska, Auburn, with all my buddies. I might just try it out. Just got a bunch of like, oh yeah, we really like you, but well, we'll let you know. And then after my senior season, about halfway through, I put together of a, I didn't even start starting until my senior year. Mm-hmm. Played a little bit, a bunch junior year, but not much. Then then halfway through, three fourths of the way through, I sent out, put it together, highlight table, out, send it out. And I got my first gray shirt offer, gray shirt scholarship offer from Virginia Tech. And they've had a thing for years, a good foundation where they send their gray shirts to a Fork Union Military Academy in Virginia. And I was like, oh, that would suck. But, I mean, it's only six months. Yeah. And then at the time, my brother had uh, was at UCLA playing football. So, too, he walked on as a long snapper tight end. And when I got that scholarship, uh, I guess they were kind of like, KP, you didn't tell us about your brother. And uh, they offered me a gray shirt scholarship because by the time I saw my highlight tape out, most of the teams didn't have any scholarships left. Yeah. Like Auburn took, brought me down on two visits. One of my best friends from home uh, walked on there and played there. And they said, like, oh, we, I'm sure that was bullshit in me, but they're like, oh, we want to offer you, but we just have no, no, none left because it's so late in the year. And so I was debating on preferred walk on there. And then you see that came out with another gray shirt trying to start the same thing that Virginia Tech's been doing for years and mm-hmm. used me as like the foundation. And they gave me like three options for prep schools. And I chose this one in Connecticut and I went there. Yeah. No kidding. Yeah, so I only got like two offers out of high school. I'll be damned. And that's see, and that's it's funny to me because basketball was your main sport. Coming out of high school, you only had two offers, and now you're playing in the NFL. Yeah, they just saw me as a six eight, two hundred. You ever seen? I was maybe two forty five, two fifty. Oh, my really? Senior year? Okay. During football season, yeah. And then come basketball season, I dropped down like two fifteen, two twenty. Look at this. I saw a picture of him whenever he did, whenever a lot like a long time ago. I didn't recognize him. Yeah. As skinny as I was as a kid. <laughs> and you were still a giant kid. Look, look, look at my hand, arms and hands. Yeah. Golly. You, I, I mean, you had, a, you had a wingspan. Oh. How old were you in that picture? Like 10? You've maybe. almost got like know, a, You have a kid now. What does that look like? I mean, that looks like a 10, 12-year-old kid, maybe. I know, but I like the Michael Phelps, but I was so fat. Y- yeah. I swam every summer. Like, that, yeah, bare, you're barely very, went to any practices. Only I went to like the... Uh, Max minimum three meets just to get in the city at the end of the year. I came in like third every time. Yeah. It's almost like a John Jones. It's crazy. Band right there. Yeah. It's unbelievable. Your hands are like down by your knees. But it's yeah, crazy. this is me my freshman year of college. So I, I'm like, I'm recruited by uh, Rick Neuheisel. Yeah. When I got these scholarships, they just see a tall six, nine, yeah. six, eight at the time. Uh, Give that boy some kid pads. with good feet that can put on some weight <laughs> for a tackle. They always mention tackle by play tight end high school. Yeah. And they were like, I'm, I'm getting there thinking, oh, they'll give me like a year at tight end. But during my gray shirt year, Neuheisel was fired and Moore came in. And to this day, I messed with them like, oh, you only honored my scholarship because my brother was on the team. He's like, damn right. <laughs> damn right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I get there. I don't know any of the coaches, never met him. I, I feel like a walk on. And I go into my locker and my number said 68. I'm like, what the fuck? Mm, that's not a tight end number. Uh, and to this day, I've kept my that number, and I mean, I'm, I'm number sixty nine. You're sixty nine now. now on the Jets, yeah. though, right? That's because we had a a, a vet guy, yeah, uh, Kelvin Beecham, great offensive lineman, and you let him keep that one. Oh, I, 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 <laughs> I don't I, think he had a choice. I, I didn't have a choice. I, I had no <laughs> no right to take that from him. Yeah, <laughs> he's a seasoned vet. But I wanted to I'd talk to you about all right. So you 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 go out to L A. You're going mm-hmm. to UCLA. How old are you when you get out there? Normally, gray shirts are only six months. Yeah, and then you report early in January. And I'm so glad I didn't. Uh, but my s- senior year in high school, at, back in Nashville, I dislocated my shoulder in the last two minutes of the state championship basketball game. We won, no big deal. No big deal. <laughs> and and we won state in football that year. And no shoulders go back in. No, no big deal. We won state in football and basketball. No big deal. Wow, okay. wow. And state. then we won the next four years in state in football and basketball after that too. Okay, back to the story. Where's um, all the rings at, man? <laughs> well, I only won. I won three. Okay, gotcha. Sophomore year basketball and then senior year football and basketball, but no big deal. No big deal. <laughs> but uh, so when that happened, I just uh, decided that they're they're like you should just do a full year. Had to get my grades up a little bit, you know. You see, like, it's a tough school. Yeah, and I uh, just ended up doing a full year and came in with the class of 2012 instead of the class of 2011. Mm-hmm. And that's that's June. And you're what, 18, 19 years old? Yeah. So I, I didn't. They call it a PG year at the prep schools I went to. Is usually more uh, kids who are wanting to need another year to like. Because I was a late bloomer too. Like 
it was it was just I was in a unique situation that I already had a scholarship and knew where I was going. Yeah. Most PGs go there to get a scholarship or students go there to get another year of school and to get into the college they want. So where I want to get to with this this is um you turn somebody that's that old loose in Los Angeles. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I, I bet it was. <laughs> yes, I have some stories. I bet you do. I bet you do. Is LA? LA is an interesting. It's. A, I have a love hate with LA. I know you do. I've yeah, heard your song. I have I've a love hate story. with LA, and that's because you lived in West Hollywood. Uh, <laughs> and I had <laughs> zero dollars, and my band was in the middle of breaking up. So yeah. it wasn't like a great time in my life. But LA is a really fun place if you go to just visit. And oh, yeah. you've got the cash to go to some nice places and, and everyone, stuff like, like that. Everyone complains like, "Oh, the traffic! Oh, it's just so big." I'm like, "Yeah, that's that's true." But once you're there, I was there for five years. Once you're there long enough, you know when to drive, not to drive. If you do drive that time, you know the back roads where you got to get, get to. And uh, this is like my second home. I freaking love it. Yeah. Oh, we'll be back out in LA this year. LA's fun for me now because of what I went through while I was there yeah. and coming back now. And, and we were just out there a couple of weeks ago. We, uh, I went out and did a dime bash. It's a, a celebration for dime bag Daryl. Okay. Yeah. You know, and, uh, we did that and took the kids to Disneyland and, uh, it's expensive. Everything out there is super fucking expensive. Dude, Disneyland's great. It's the original one. Yeah. It is super expensive. Yeah. But Orlando. Orlando, you like Orlando? It's so much more Disney space. World. Disney World. It's, more, it's, it's so much it's, bigger. It's a lot bigger in it. Yeah. yeah. That's what, see, Josh, if he were here, Josh Thompson, we don't know, he's missing in action. But that's what he was saying. He took his family out there two or three years ago and came back. And now I'll I'll go because we went with some friends when we were out there mm-hmm. in L.A. or Anaheim or whatever. And uh, they they had talked me and Rebecca and our kids into going with their family. And, you know, I'm I'm like one of those guys. I'm like, fuck that. Dude. I never like, thought I'd see the day he went there. He I hates love, lines. I hate, li- I hate lines. I hate being around people. I hate being around big crowds. <laughs> that's why I love you. <laughs> you know, like I'll sit there and drink a beer one on one, you know, but like cr- big crowds freak me out, you know, being being around a lot of people that have you know can just grab at you and, and it kind of freaks me out but we went out there i had an absolute blast i probably had more fun than our kids had we had we spent like 12 hours out there so now it's a, I, I will did you get go. the fast passes at least we got the fast pass yeah, you, there's no other way the, the fast pass is the way to go skip the, well, line. The, the one thing that pisses me off about disneyland fast passes is if you go to the universal studios in florida that's that's a big difference between la and florida disneyland's yeah. still the, the shit yeah. but the universal studios in LA compared to the Universal Studios in Florida, mm-hmm. night and day. Yeah. Way more room, way more fun. But the Universal Studios in Florida, you can come, you can go on a ride if you have the fast pass and keep going for oh, okay. five You don't times have to stop, row. you don't have to come off of it. You don't have to like schedule a time like in Disneyland. Remember yeah, Disneyland, that? you have to schedule you have time to schedule for your a time fast and come back. Yeah. And like, where in like Universal Studios, you, you have a fast pass, you're free. Go. You can go a ride 10 times in a row, go to any ride whenever you want, skip the line. Okay, good to know. See, but the, the one, Disneyland opened the door to where now I will I will go check out Disney World. Okay. I will totally go out there and check it out. You need to check out Universal Band Studios. field trip. I do. You, you, you mentioned your brother, Kevin, a while ago, and, uh, and he went to UCLA as well. Yeah. One of the coolest things for me, at least seeing this, and I don't know what the odds or the chances are, is, but um, you got us tickets to go see, uh, when you were on the Bills, Buffalo at Minnesota. And that was the first time we've ever played each other in our lives. Is it really? Because because uh, Kevin was the long snapper for yeah. the Vikings, and he came over, and you were there, and, and and your mom and dad were there, and I got to meet your folks, and and you know I'm standing by you and your brother, which you're giant human beings. You looked uh, a little tired that morning. Oh yeah, he yeah. was. I've never. <laughs> <laughs> That, we you said hurt. morning, see, because I never see morning. I don't know. Yeah, I don't. I don't <laughs> see morning, so I always look tired in the morning. But and I was talking to your dad, and you know, I just I remember asking your dad, I was, I was you know, like, how cool, or what are the chances, you know, of having two of your your sons play in the NFL? He's like, you know, he goes, uh, he said, uh, not as not as much as you would think. He goes, it does happen, and, and I know it does happen. I know there's brothers in the league now and stuff yeah. like that, but it's, it's still pretty fucking rare because yeah. there's 1500 yeah. nfl players exactly. and like i never really, you never really like think about it until like someone brings it up and you're just kind of like oh shit yeah well it, it would <laughs> kind of be the equivalent of like you know having two brothers and both of them end up being in bands that make it right. or you know that in that because that never fucking happens you yeah. know unless you're like 
by being in separate bands than being in separate bands that make it you know that yeah. type of deal i mean i guess you got like white zombie and, well rob zombie and, and uh his brother was singer for um power man 5000 so i don't i don't know I, you know that's that's the only kind of correlation i can make but um and also their, jer- their your mom's jersey that day half minnesota Half Buffalo. Half Buffalo. <laughs> and my whole family, my, both my parents grew up in South Dakota. So my mom, I have a huge family. And they're all from South Dakota and something like Brookings, Sioux Falls side. Yeah. So it's the Minnesota side. So all of them are Vikings fans. Yeah. And so when they showed up after the game, they're all wearing Bills jerseys. But then I'm looking on like Instagram, seeing these stories and pictures, and they're all wearing the... Uh, my brother's uh, Vikings jersey. I'm like, <laughs> you two time, and you guys were too scared to wear my jersey in the stands. And then, yeah, that's awesome. And then they took them all off, and like my, my buddies on the team would come up and be like, "Wow, your family really hates you. These are they're all in Vikings gear." Yeah, <laughs> that's funny. No, I remember. Um, I'm not sure if it was the last time that we saw you. It was the earlier part of the season. All right, because you started the 2019 season in Buffalo and ended up in uh, in New York. Yeah, that happened in October. October third, like going into week four. Yeah, on a Thursday, which is an unusual day to be released. Usually it's like Monday or Tuesday. Yeah, and I was going into my first homecoming, coming back to Nashville to play the Titans. Mm-hmm. And they call me in, and I get released, and then I was on a Thursday, and then by Friday at four o'clock, I find out that a couple of teams claim me, but I'm, I'm going to the Jets. Yeah, claim you on waivers. So and the next, the very next day, you get. Oh, I, the, no one, not even like the other coaches, the other, like the, the Bills know until I find out. Cause it's like a whole separate thing, uh, I guess. But uh, I found out at 4 o'clock, which is the deadline for the next day. And the Jets call me and they're like, can you be on a flight by 7? I'm like, yes, sir. Yeah, absolutely. Damn uh, sure can. Yep. Packed whatever I could. <clears throat> That's got to be a weird thing. Like, what's the process like? Because, all right, you've been in, in Boston. You've been in New York and you've been in Buffalo, those aren't too far geographically separated from one another. Right. But, like, one day you may wake up and, you know, like, hey, guess what? You're going to Seattle. Yeah. Like, but no matter that's what. That's what man, I learned the most. It's, as it, a young rookie, it's a business. It's like, a business, right. It's, that's It's an absolute business. Are you scrambling to try to get out of a lease in an apartment here and trying to find a place here? How does that work? You know, you just got to – I ended up keeping my apartment in Buffalo just for the rest of the year because I want to deal with moving out. I, I, I went there at right the second week after the season ended uh, and, and moved all my stuff out. I think I had, like, maybe one or two things of furniture left in there just because the rent's not horrible. Yeah. I mean, if it was the rent I'm paying now in Jersey, I would have had someone come and move me <laughs> out right away. Yeah. I mean, I can't imagine what I went – if I – like, the times that I've had to change teams, if I had to do that with a wife and kid – like being single, like you just pick up and I mean, it's still tough, but yeah. See, and I remember that from when I was a kid because I grew up, we grew up with a, a major league pitcher and going to church with him. His name is Larry McWilliams. He pitched for uh, like 12 years in the bigs. When we met him, he was pitching for the pirates. It, they were, I'm from Fort Worth, Texas. So they, you know, Larry, Vicky and all the kids lived in Fort Worth. And then wherever he was playing, he played for Pittsburgh for, the majority of his career, but he played for some other teams as well. Yeah. And, you know, if he got traded, because they had f- f- six kids, they had a lot of kids, and dealing with his schedule and where he was going, and, yeah. you know, they always had their house, you know, here in, in Texas, yeah. but then it was like, well, they might have had a place up here, and it's like, well, shit, we got to sell that fucking place and go get a place in yeah, Philadelphia or whatever, you know, it's, it's weird. It's something different. You know, we don't have to deal with that. We just yeah. go out on the road for a long time. Like this off season, I was uh, debating on buying a house in Nashville. Yeah, because in the past, I always just spend three weeks at home, stay with my folks, hang with them, spend time with them because I never see them, and then I'll go out to L.A., San Diego, Orange County for two months to train and like live out of a suitcase. But I'm 27 now. No, I'm I'm getting a little older. You getting up there? I kind of want to get like a home base, like you said. Sure. And so I was kind of debating on, I'm probably going to buy a house in Nashville just to have a home base. I'll still make my trips out there, but it won't be for two months at a time. Yeah. Yeah. So is, is it going to be uh, uh, Jets next year as well? Mm-hmm. I have one more uh, year in my rookie contract with them. Awesome. Contract year, baby. Yeah. Yeah. You look good in that green, though, man. I think I rock it pretty well. Yeah, you're, ro- you're rocking <laughs> the a, green, dude. Good color. Good. All right. I'm, I'm Irish, so. It all works. <laughs> Because there's so many Irish people oh, yeah. there. I think I got more than Norwegian genes. I tried to claim full-blooded Irish. My mom's like, there's not a lot of 6'9 Irishmen out there. 
do, do your uh, do, do, what's the uh, do your DNA testing? Swab your mouth and do your. You know, uh, what is that? I want the government to have my DNA. <laughs> <laughs> They've already got your fingerprints no, and everything. Yeah, I just love conspiracy theories. But um, I think it was the last time that we saw you was in Buffalo, mm-hmm. and it was right. I think it was in between the start of preseason or preseason and the start of the regular season. You were on concussion protocol. Do you remember that? We can edit it out. Oh, we can edit that out. Yeah. No, no, no. I, I was like, should I? But I remember, yes. Yeah. I was thinking about that after our playoff game against Miami when we showed up. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I forgot about that. Yeah. Yeah. That was the first night. Y'all came yeah, out. I was on uh, protocol. I showed you that video of me getting knocked out. I did, out. yeah. Because you, you, the hit came from the back. Yeah, our right guard missed the D tackle. And I had my guy in front of me. I was blocking him. All of a sudden, I get the QB, Matt Barkley. Uh, he's one of my best friends in Buffalo. And the guy who tackled him right in my back just drops me to my knees and just whiplashes my face mask into the ground. Yeah. And I guess my arms just go limp. Well, you can see it on the film. You can film. see it on the yeah. film. Yeah, you were out for a minute. I was good, good three seconds. Yeah. And then I come to. And then you <laughs> get up when and I, run When down. I came to, I had no idea that I hit my head or anything. I thought I just hit the ground and got up. Yeah, but I remember being like, "Oh shit, my back!" I just got two full people in my back, and that, that hurt. Yeah, finish the drive, we score, and we come off the field, and I get swarmed by the doctors, and which that's their job; they got to watch for that shit. Absolutely, because they had the main dude upstairs watching, yeah. right? But you're saying you finished the drive? Yeah, finished the drive. That's amazing. Wow, because I had, I just got up. I was like, "God, my freaking back, Jesus <laughs> Christ!" <laughs> and then I came off the field and I was like, you know, pissed. They had, took me to the blue tent. They fold up and they're like, exam. They're like, oh, how's your head? How'd you straight in the head? And I was like, I was getting all like defensive and pissed. I was like, I didn't hit my fucking head. I, I, I hit my back. I took two full grown men in my back uh, at full speed. Yeah. Just being, because I had no idea. So then they're, they're sitting there going, oh, yeah. 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 But then, and then they take me inside just through pro- pro- protocol. I have to like do a, like a little iPad test and like walk the line. But, just out of like straight like attitude and me thinking that I am totally fine, get me back on the field and being a little pissed off. I, I, I passed and came out, finished the third quarter until the younger guys went in. It was preseason. And then the next morning, uh, I wasn't feeling too hot. Yeah. I went to work out and I was like getting dizzy and out of short breath easily. And then our trainer showed my trainer who I'm close with, Nate Bresky, showed me the video from the game and I was like oh shit oh yeah now I see what you saw and I do not remember that whatsoever nope damn yeah cause you yeah you showed it to us that day and, and like I said you were still cause you met up before the show with us and uh I don't even think you had a beer I think you might have had one but then I you had I think I'm on a fake drink when I drank half of one yeah and then and Neil then watched get, the building. Remember that was falling. Then. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then you had uh, you had to go to like a team meeting or a team dinner. That it was night. our O line dinner. At o line, we yeah. Sears, like the steakhouse down the road. Yeah, the O line dinner. But and then, and then me and uh, Ike Bodiger came back. Uh, oh, and you all you guys uh, also hooked up our, ch- our one of my athletic trainers. Uh, yeah, Denny, and he yeah. freaking had a blast. But I, I wanted to come back, but I didn't want to be seen at a concert. Just like being two weeks in the protocol. Right. I'm like I can handle like one song. So yeah. I. We, me and I came to the back and I snuck in and I tried to avoid our trainer and just kind of hung out in the upstairs thing. Yeah, right over and, the balcony. Uh, yeah. Perfect. And just hung out there and then I stayed for like two or three songs and I was like, all right, let's get out of here. Yeah. That was good. Yeah. No, you, you got you got your fill. You showed up. Oh, like, yeah. hey, Cody, was you know. I'm not, uh, not going to miss you coming to Buffalo. When are you coming, when are you coming to Jersey? Fuck. <clears throat> we'll be up. Um, we'll be in Albany in March. That's so far. Oh, okay. Albany's okay. far. I don't, know, I don't know when the next time we're going to, because... Sometimes when we play in the in the city, we stay in Jersey. I don't know. Oh, I don't, or, or the city, yeah. Yeah, I don't know whenever. I don't know when we're going to be out. There. I know we got like three New York shows coming up or something like that. I don't know when exactly we'll we're be out there. We're in Forum Park, Madison, New Jersey, so I can get to, like Hoboken in forty minutes. Okay. New York in forty minutes. Okay, so it's not bad. All right. Yeah, I'll, I'll let you know. I'll shoot you a text when I when I find out. We find out whenever y'all find out. <laughs> yeah, we don't. Thanks, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> Hell, I, don't, I usually don't even know who we're playing with until like two days before the show starts. That's like me. Everyone's like, "Oh, who do you play next week?" I'm like, "I don't know. I don't know." <laughs> yeah, I'm one. I'm either like, know if you're traveling like, or you're not. It sounds traveling. cheesy, like oh, one week at a time, one game at a time. But like, literally, you're so focused on this that week, you're like. I'm gonna be like, who you, who, you, who you all play next week? I'm like, I have no fucking idea. Right. But people ask me, you know, hey, where are you playing next week? Or I was like, I don't know. Am I playing next week? I don't. <laughs> I'm just so focused on that week. I'm not like looking ahead. Maybe if that's like, a, if it was like, oh, I'm playing Nashville next week. I know that one because it's 
my homecoming. Like, all right. Now I want to get a little bit into uh, the life of an offensive lineman. I'm going to grab another beer, though. Would you like one? Yes, please. I thought you were going to ask some more LA UCLA stories. We can get back to that. Yeah, we can get we can get to those. I want some good UCLA stories, but the life of an offensive lineman, like the caloric intake that you guys y'all eat so much. Oh yeah, nice out. <laughs> There's some coming. Too. Y'all eat so much, oh, but that you is have bad guys. That is full airplane. That is <laughs> that's an airplane far. Dude, keep that shit over there. Nobody yeah, wants man. that. Yeah. Nobody, nobody wants that. I mean, I can usually take that. And you, you're bad. wallering in your own squalor. Well, over it's there. all that Honolulu food. It's, yeah, yeah, man. I. I haven't weighed myself yet. Did you bring some Hawaiian back with you? <laughs> Let Fart it out. So you guys, you guys have to eat mass quantities of food. I've, yes. I've seen like they have the kitchens in y'all's complexes. It's insane. But you guys are expected to be this big and still as fast as you are. Right. Correct me if I'm wrong. An offensive lineman is judged by your first three or four steps back. Right. Like how fast you are is that is that kind of your a litmus first test? Two steps off the line, whether you're going forward in a run or backwards. Yeah. I mean, our in passport, we want to beat him to our spot. We're thinking he's he's there, QB's here. I want to get to this junction point before he does. Yeah. With my feet and hands ready to punch on time. It's insane how fast you guys move. Because Josh's little brother played ball for TCU, and he was an offensive lineman for TCU. And, and so we, we got a little bit of get to see kind of behind the scenes of what you guys do and, and, yeah. and how fast you guys actually have to be. You have I mean, you have 300-pound guys running – Every play. Running high fours in 40s, you know? Like, that's insane fast. And, or, or it's either that or 270, 280 guys, 3% body fat running low fours at you. It's crazy. Off the line. Giant Jeez. human beings moving that quick. Yeah. It's fucking scary as hell, dude. You I'm say, positive. You know, say it's we're like trying a, to move backwards while they're running full speed at yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. And then at the junction, point of contact, finding... Staying in your point of power, yeah, and or trying to recover and get to the point of power as he's running towards full speed at you, trying to run you over. Yeah, you're saying it's like a car crash. It is a car crash every, every, every play. play, every play. Oh yeah, that's that's that was the best thing I I, I heard. Josh's little brother Spencer, who's now my financial specialist here, <laughs> advisor, but um. I hope he's smarter than Josh. He's smarter than Josh. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah, way smarter. <laughs> okay. Josh ended up in a band. Like, <laughs> this guy ended up in finance. But, you he know, did hit a hole in one, though. Yeah, Josh did hit a hole in one. And He'll tell pop, you about didn't it. pay for the video tape. Yeah, that, that still baffles me. $250 <laughs> to pay for the video. Josh hit a hole in one in, in a golf course in Phoenix. Arizona, yeah. That was right before we first met. Yep. Yeah, that was, because we met at the... Uh, pot of um, Gold Festival. I, I want to call it the Leprechaun Festival. Uh, it wasn't... <laughs> The Pot of Gold Festival. Yeah, me, was, that concert was me. Kyle from uh, Kyle, Athlete's Brand, yeah. Athlete's Brand, and then uh, Richie Incognito. Yep, that's yeah. right. Yeah, yep. And then uh, one of closest we had some, friends of Buffalo. We had some baseball players out there, yeah, Homer too. Bailey. Homer uh, Bailey was out Austin there. Austin Bibbins Dirk, Jake Deakman. Jake Deakman. Yeah, ABD was there. So, yeah, that was that was a bunch of football and baseball players. That was that was fun for us. The festival was weird. Oh, was that was, that was a weird it festival. It was a weird festival. There was, like, reggae going on in the corner, like, <laughs> just random it looked tents like it was in like a big, everywhere. Big fucking, like, airplane hangar. Yes. Yeah. I mean, like, I'd go play it again because they paid pretty good. <laughs> but, I mean, it's like we walked in. I was like, the fuck is this? We remember I'll, I'll say, we all stayed was good but just everything around it, like the food the drinks yeah. is how it was set up there too like in the i feel either like a reggae smoke sh- sesh festival out there yeah and, <laughs> and i don't know that yeah because sturgill he sturgill backed out of that one he was supposed to play that one too and i don't know why he backed out he has his own reasons but it ended up it ended up being fine for us because we ended up gonna hang out with you guys and and shit like that but uh you brought it up man some i want, I want some good ucla stories oh shit yeah well so anything that may be incriminating, um, we can edit. So that could be a lot. That could be a lot. Okay. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, no. So it was a culture shock going to L.A., but I will say this. I was already out there a bunch growing up with my family. My mom worked out there a bunch. And with my brother being out there on the team for three years before I even got there. Yeah. I was out, I, so I'm, I'm familiar. Know a bunch of the guys on the team. But the one thing about UCLA is they don't recruit much out of California. And so I had a friend. Literally everyone's from Southern California, Northern California. Obviously the only two parts of California. But mostly Southern California. I had a friend all the way from, if you looked at the map from Malibu, Santa Barbara, all the way down to San Diego, as far as you can go. Almost every single beach town had a friend, like someone I knew or a friend that was from there. Hey, Johnny! Hey, Dad! Did you hit another hole in one? Is that why you're late? Dude. <laughs> Welcome, <laughs> Josh Thompson. Jeez Louise, man. So now I can do the whole, I can do to my right, as usual, 
Bobby Keith, how you doing, Bobby yeah, Keith? I'm good, man. I'm good now that Dad's here. Gee, and uh, my goodness. to my left are <laughs> Sleeping Beauty, Sleeping Ugly. Sleeping Sleep, Ugly, yeah. Sleeping Ugly. Let's go with that. I'll say Sleeping Beauty. Thanks, Thanks buddy. Really <laughs> it's good to see you. I miss, I miss I'm you. much more happy to see you now. I missed you. How you doing? Doing well. We were right in the middle of a good story. We were. So we were. Yeah, we were. And uh, to Bobby Keith's right, again, our special guest. Connor McDermott. Thanks for being New York here. Jets. Yeah, thanks again for being here. We're about to get some good UCLA stories. Here. Oh, nice. Yeah. This is great. All right, UCLA, cool. So you got a friend all the way in Malibu, all the way to, you were saying. Oh, yeah, so like, even if we weren't hanging in L.A. and stuff, every weekend we had a place to go, with like Newport, Hermosa Beach, Manhattan Beach, Carlsbad, San Clemente, Dan Point, anywhere, Laguna Beach, just all up and down the coast. You can't beat those views either. Oh, no, it's unbelievable. <laughs> and just being in college, like driving down on the weekends and just doing dumb shit. I was going to ask, how smart is that to send an 18-year-old out to... <laughs> the west the west coast <laughs> with all the women and I was pretty innocent at the time yeah not so much after a year or two I was just, <laughs> I was just a nice nice little southern boy I, uh, I'd get cut off in traffic I'd be like oh it's okay it's okay and i get out to LA and within two months I'm driving my truck in LA mm -hmm. I'm just the worst driver ever just yelling <laughs> at people like oh it's fantastic most aggressive driver. You know, they do have traffic and stuff. Everybody has traffic. Like you said, though, you learn the times to drive, the times not to drive. I remember getting out there, because when I went out, it was 03. So we're talking a long time ago. Yeah. And uh, I remember gas in Texas at the time was like a yeah. dollar or a dollar ten. And I got out to LA and it was a dollar sixty. And that shit fucked me up, man. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, don't throw another, don't throw another oh, fifty cents on my gosh. gallon of gas, man. I, I can't imagine it that cheap. God, I know, right? Because now you talk, you're looking at I mean, two fifty at least. Oh God, when we were out there last week, it was it was high, or two weeks ago, whenever that was. Three weeks. When ago. I was there, it was like when it was like gas was like real low, yeah, or something. And I, I remember it was consistent for a couple of years of like five plus dollars. Yeah. Well, there was a few years where it was four plus here, and Josh and I were on time uh, at that time. We're touring in a uh, Dodge Ram pickup truck. I thought that was when I was in high school. And there was like people, there was lines at the gas stations. Yeah. I forget what happened. Why there was a shortage on gas, but well, we just needed to drill a little more. <laughs> <laughs> it's all part. I was just a setup. I mean, fuck, dude. I mean, Texas by itself is one of the largest oil deposits in the world. It's like, fuck, dude. Get that shit out the ground. Let's go. Yeah. What are we saving it for? Keep it right here. What are we doing with the Cheaper to. We, that's yeah, like, yeah, yeah, it's cheaper. It's like, what do we say? Why are we buying it from them? You know. Anyway, it's a different story. Yeah. All right. Well. UCLA party stories wise, just keep asking me questions and they'll come to me. Yeah. Oh gosh. Well, I mean, it just it has to be wild being like what we were saying. It has to be wild being you know eighteen, nineteen years old, being in and you know Los Angeles, California, being a collegiate athlete. I'm sure that doesn't hurt with the ladies. Not at all. Not at all. <laughs> <laughs> Can you hear me now? I, sure. I'm sure. I'm sure that that translates well into you know being a, a, a an NFL you know football player. That probably doesn't hurt with the ladies either. That's why I'm going to go to the game tonight with That's him. <laughs> <laughs> you guys have me all pumped. I thought like, all y'all were coming. I'm sorry, man. I thought we were, and then they got the dinner thing. I, so. I had the dinner bomb dropped on me about uh, five minutes after I woke up today. Yeah. Sorry, buddy. Who's at the dinner? Um, my management, a lot of people I work with, and a lot of people that they think I need to meet. Oh, yeah. This is, mm. it's, this is one, oh, this is one of those. This is one of those, yeah. Right. He's real enthused about this. So the Predator game sounds Way I don't think you understand how fun. Have you ever been to one? I, I have never been to a pro hockey game. That's why I told him. It's my, one, it's my favorite sport to watch live. Okay, I've watched the Instagram two, stories. They get they get crazy. That's why I want to go. I want to see the, the atmosphere. The Preds when they came to Nashville, we were like, "What's hockey?" Yeah. We had maybe one ice skating rink in the city at the Sportsplex right down the road, and it just turned into this is one of the best hockey towns in the NHL. Cause, yeah. And, but when it started, if you go to a hockey game anywhere else in the country, it's all the same. Like, it's people watching hockey because they know hockey, and like it's not like that crazy. And they all kind of cheer at the same time just because it's like traditional. Like these teams have been there forever, and these mm -hmm. fans know how like hockey goes. And when they came here, we were like, okay, we're going to do this. And there's just a bunch of rednecks yelling, shoot the puck. <laughs> and it's been here. Shoot the puck. And it's been here long enough to where, all right, Nashvilleians know hockey now, know the rules and stuff. But we just totally redneck or countrified the shit out of it and live music and intermissions. We chant nonstop and cheer nonstop. And we have this little thing called the Lexus Lounge, where it's kind of like underneath where the team comes out. We can watch them come out the tunnel. Yeah. And it's free booze and free food all day, all game. 
and you, you, can either, you can either go to your seats or, which I love because I don't fit in the damn seats, Yeah. or go stand at the glass where the team walks out, they'll just shut the doors, and you can stand right there. Yeah. And I just do that all game. Well, it helps when you all have a good team. Preds are good. Yeah, and it's... And have been for a couple of years. It's great when you've been going there for years and like you know the bartenders and she'll start bringing me beers when I'm not even finished the first one without even me asking. It's pretty, yeah. it's beautiful. It's a beautiful thing. <laughs> well, I know the Preds beat the Stars. Was it last year or the year before? Knocked them out of the playoffs, something like that. It was, I believe that was a couple years ago. A couple years ago? Yeah. So anyway, sorry, I have to rain check on the, um, I have to go do grown-up shit tonight. Right. Sorry, buddy. I got you, though. Let's go, baby. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, good for you. I'd rather go to that. Maybe. Well, I'll you I'll, this is, I'll, I'll probably be going. You want to go? Yeah. So me, the, uh, there you go, Connor. I'm not going to go to that bullshit. Me and Josh. Is that cool? <laughs> S- sucks being the boss, man. <laughs> you need like a doppelganger. They can so just Chris do. In your, in, your, in your stead. They can do this yeah. for you. I do. I need a doppelganger for the yeah. game tonight. Is that cool? Me and Josh go with do you? that. Yeah. Okay, cool. Hey, Josh, yes. Josh, you're coming? Yeah, I think I'm probably that. Hell yeah. Is that yes. cool? Yeah, absolutely. All right. Let's just, and we'll send him a bunch of pictures and make him have some FOMO. <laughs> As he's shaking, give him the FOMO. Stiff in the suit's hand. Just don't do too much of this now. No, no. You know, I'll, I'll tell you. Kid Rock told me one time. He said, "You don't, you don't gotta suck the whole dick. You just gotta uh, touch the balls a little gotta bit. Press the balls. Yeah, that's it. So you know, um, and ball. I disagreed with everything that he said because <laughs> I'm not good at either one. But anyway, <laughs> all right, Josh. You, hit know, him. you know who y'all should get on here? Who? Uh, have you met Rob O'Neill? Huh. The, the guy, the Navy SEAL that shot Bin Laden. Oh, you're his, you're his buddy. Yeah, I'm buddies with him. Yeah, and kid, that, your kid Rockstar reminded him because he lives just by the house like six months ago in Nashville, out by Old Hickory. Yeah, he lives like next to Kid Rock, and uh, they're good buddies. And uh, oh shit, he's hysterical. You would love him, absolutely love him. Rob O'Neill. Yeah. Okay, it's so a good I, one to look him up, man. Yeah, he, he, he's the one that shot Bin Laden. Where I don't know where he did, but I'm, I, I like to imagine it was in the face. So. Yeah, I imagine it was. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> those headshots tend to take you out pretty quick. Yeah, <laughs> now, I was excited about having you because my brother played college ball for TCU. He was right. offensive guard. That. We talked about that a, a, a little bit, and I don't think people really, really understand the grind of a, especially in season. Just a typical day, just oh, to yeah. go from from beginning to end. How much? A, I would. Most colleges are pretty much the same, especially the those top fifty type of. Right. I mean, those guys had you from six a.m. to midnight locked down as far as your schedule for you, pretty much. Right. College wise. Yeah. Oh yeah. Like training camp. Yes. I mean, what was what was that typical day during the during the football season of like training camp or like in season? No, in, in like in season because then you still had your school and all oh, that shit. God, I gotta remember all that. Uh, so we played Saturday. So Sundays was like the day to like watch the game film, like or or Mondays now watch the game film, work out, get a little lactic acid out, massages, whatever, and then we were uh, done for the night. Monday was usually our days off, but we still had classes. Mm-hmm. And then Tuesdays was so. Throughout the whole season, all through our college, I was waking up at 4 a.m., 4.30 every morning, which sucked at first, but once you got used to it, it was mm-hmm. amazing because we practice every day at 7 a.m., which I fucking love. Really? Oh, at, my at, at, that, God, at that time in the morning? Get it done with. It's not floating yeah. over your head all day while you're at class, just mentally getting exhausted mm-hmm. and then having to go kick someone's ass at practice at 4.30 in the afternoon, which I, I like afternoon practices every now and then. But, mm-hmm. I mean, we'd we, we be walking off the field at 9 a.m. and – Students are just waking up, walking to class. It's a great feeling. Like, yeah, how how was sleeping then, bitch? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'll be waking up at four thirty. We had practice at seven. I had to be on the field by six thirty. Get treatment. Get taped and stuff. Eat something. And then you still have to. And then and then we were done for the day until four thirty. So we practice in the morning and then have meetings in the afternoon from like four thirty to seven seven thirty. And then everything in between. So we all had like a gap from between ten a.m. by the time you shower, get done with practice, and how long it was, and. 4 p.m. is when you can have your classes. 10 a.m. and 4 p.m. is when you can have your classes. And it was the best when you had a class checker that was your boy and you can just go home and sleep. <laughs> so, I mean, but, yeah, so it's four to, I mean, at least for the program, for twelve, at least 12 hours a day. Oh, yeah. At least. Yeah. And and I think that you guys go through, or I mean, just any college athlete goes through. So, But because, basically, mostly football, because that's the money. I mean, that's that's yeah. where the money's at. Oh, for it sure. It is a business. 
um, even in college. So where are you at on this uh, paying paying college athletes? I'm an old lineman at heart. I'm used to getting no love. And like, <laughs> 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 I mean, I don't think these college kids should be becoming millionaires. No, no, <clears throat> I, I don't either. But but if let's say. Uh, Brett Hundley at UCLA, or Josh Rosen, or uh, Sam Donald at SC. You should definitely get a percentage of his jerseys and stuff that he's selling in his name. I don't see the point of like having the guy do like commercials and stuff. But I mean, I don't have, I don't, I'm not picky on it. But like, or at least maybe relax some of these rules that they have that the NCAA has. Well, the NCAA's rules are. I just uh, well, like I said, I, it, now that no one, I just think it's it's with as much time as you guys put in and as, as a oh, yeah. student athlete. I definitely um, think student athletes should get some money. The thing that always pissed me off and I thought was complete bullshit was I was fortunate enough to where I could get some monthly money from my parents, mm-hmm. 200 bucks a month, yeah. 300 bucks a month added. But we were getting the same scholarship check per month. Started off about thirteen to $1,500 per month as guys in Auburn, Alabama, Ole Miss, and Ohio State, whose rents were... 300 bucks, 400 bucks, yeah. 500 bucks a month. Yeah, you're living in L.A. And yeah. I live in Westwood, one of the most expensive college rent towns in the country. And my first college apartment in the party area by all the frats, one bedroom plus den. My buddy took the den. I took the one bedroom. It only fit his bed and the desk. He was paying 1000 I was paying 1300 Yeah. And this is like the shitty apartment, college <laughs> yeah. apartment. No washer dryer, no dishwasher, like $2, no AC, a month. like freaking dirty. Yeah. yeah. With the restaurant. Straight that party that spot. C next to him. What's that? With the restaurants that have the C next to him. So for well, their that's rating. what I'm saying. I was like, I'm fortunate to have some extra little side cash per month for my family. Yeah. For my folks. But most guys didn't like yeah. have that. Like, they spent ninety percent of their cash, or their scholarship check on freaking rent. Yeah. Where these guys in Auburn, Alabama, are spending they're getting thousand dollars, twelve hundred dollars in their pocket to freaking live on. No, I, I, I personally that was, that was my biggest thing that I remember with the NCAA and like how it should maybe fluctuate a fluctuate little bit. a little bit. Like, yeah. Because even if you give us like twenty four hundred dollars a month, everyone's like, "Oh, that's a thousand dollars more." Like, but I'm like, that's cost that, of that, living. The is cost of living is different. Mm-hmm. Yeah, food is more expensive out there. Like everything. Yeah, yeah. everything is is more expensive out there. It's it's insane. Yes. I mean, you travel for for a living. You play football, but you travel. You know, and so you know, there's different parts of the country that are really really expensive. That's happens to be one of the most expensive parts. And now where you're I mean, living, <laughs> I mean, Westwood is right behind UCLA. Is across the street, Sunset Boulevard is Bel Air. To the left is Beverly Hills. In front of it is Culver City. To the right is Brentwood and Santa Monica. Yeah. And behind Beverly Hills is uh, West Hollywood. Like, you're in the heart of it all. Mm-hmm. If I was to buy a place in L.A., I'd buy it right in Westwood on, like, that Wilshire Quarter because you can get to West Hollywood in 10 minutes. You can get to Santa Monica in 10 minutes. You can get everywhere. Yeah. But getting back to the, the thing about I, – I, I have no problem with, you know, the, the NCAA – relaxing you know a little bit on oh, for sure because here's relax. here's the way i look at it i know that you're going to school but in my opinion you're going to school and like you you have two full-time jobs you're a full-time you're, you're playing football yeah you're a full-time student and i'm not saying that i think that you know it ought to be like you know mama gets a porsche if baby gets to go to this school i don't think it should be shit like that but like percentages that somebody smarter than me needs to yeah, sit there shouldn't down and, be any bribing like sit down and figure out yeah a fair number because you're 18 years old, you're going to work for something that's making a whole lot of fucking money, and you're not seeing any of it. Yeah, exactly. You know, and, and that's just I mean, me. You could be at Ohio State, and you're starting quarterback, and you're, you could be making some decent, even if it's just a small percentage on those jerseys being sold. Like, that's yeah. a fan base like Ohio State. Like, you can be making a good portion. Absolutely. Absolutely. Just like jersey sales alone. Yeah. How many concussions have you had? Three. Three. So my son is eight, turn, about to turn nine. Cody has has a younger son. And, you know, I'm going through the – I'm not letting him play tackle football right now. Um, I, I, I think what, I will – What what grade is eight or nine? I'm trying oh, okay. Sorry. Uh, sorry third I'm, grader. Third grader. Uh, uh, yeah. They, I mean, they're playing tackle football at kindergarten now. Why? I don't know. I played tackle from when I was six until With I was pads? 18. Yeah. Yeah. I played tackle ball at six. That's some Texas shit right there. It, I, it, it kind yeah. of is. We, um, we just played flag football up until fucking fifth grade. Then we that's when we started tackle okay, football. Which is, grade. which is flag football has become huge now. I think I think that's perfect. Like just keep it fun until fifth and sixth grade, and then like even fifth and sixth grade, like you're so you're young as shit. Like I think I have a picture of me in fifth. Like it's like there's no reason you should be trying to 
I guess my, my, my question was, is, you know, how do you feel about kids getting into, is that the, you know, getting into full pads and stuff? <laughs> as tall as me. Oh, geez. <laughs> <laughs> you think, well, you think you, that kid knew what, like, yeah, you, think, you think that kid knows how to yeah. form tackle the right way? I was a beast tied in there. No big deal. <laughs> like those muscles. <laughs> the ripped tenure. We need like a visual. The, the, the old, like, we need to, whenever we do this podcast, we need like a visual. Okay, so moment. well, <laughs> he definitely had the old school look like the 1992 shoulder pads that were twice as oh, yeah. wide. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Makes um, you look big. My shoulder pads a, were a higher solid, than my helmet. That might have been, I don't know if I was fifth or sixth grade, but I remember in sixth grade, I wrestled for the first year and I was, I was under 120 because in fifth and sixth grade, if you were over 120, you had to have the stripe and you couldn't run with the ball. Okay. So I was, I was, I was a twig. I was light. You were in there with a trying to cut weight with the with the bag and stuff, trying to keep that. Oh, stripe I, I, never, off I never, I never, had to worry about cutting weight. <laughs> I was all, a, a stripe. If you're over, over one twenty, okay, we had X's. They would just, okay. they would just put a, 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 a black stripe down the middle of your helmet, kind of, yeah. like, and that that was a uh, because nobody was going to tackle your big ass. <laughs> well, I wasn't over. I was, I never had to worry about weight. Like, I was oh. always. You see how skinny I was? Oh, okay, yeah. Oh, yeah. So I, I thought you were talking about you. I, Sorry, I was throwing the ball at every, every play. No big deal. No big deal. <laughs> no, I do have a funny story. I remember Connor telling me, I think you were at uh, Kyle Field at A&M. He said it was so loud you couldn't hear the snap count, right? Yeah. And he said he just, he just missed it one play. Oh, that didn't surprise well, me. That, that was Husky Stadium. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Okay. Northwestern? The l- loudest stadium I ever played in was oh, Washington. Uh, Washington. Washington. Because those rain rafters, that sound just bounces off and it's uh. deafening. First third down, I started holding my guard's hand in the game. First third down, it's my first year starting. I haven't really played in a loud stadium yet. I'm like, is this ball going to get snapped? I don't hear anything. I look back, look in. As I'm looking in, the ball snapped. I go, fuck. <laughs> I turn out, the guy's already by me. I'm like, there goes my first sack of my career. <laughs> the rest of the game, I go, Redmond, hold my hand. Was fine the rest of the game. Have some great pictures of it. We look fantastic. <laughs> That's how you got through that game. Oh, yeah, because I've never been coached or like, had to worry about s- silent count. I was my first year starting. I was like 275 at left tackle. And, uh, and that got me through the game. And I just started like doing silent count. I never had to, obviously never held my guard's hand again. But <laughs> it, was, it, was, it makes a good story and some funny <clears throat> pictures to look back on. That's great, man. See, I'm, I'm glad I brought that up. I, didn't, I couldn't remember what it but was. The Texas A&M one, like, I played in Nebraska. That was loud as shit. A and M, A and M was, but where Washington was deafening to where I, I couldn't hear anything. A and M was strange. I, I still can't figure it out. You to hear this that? A and M, you are strange. <laughs> yeah. yeah, everyone thinks you're strange. You're strange, including all my one. best friends went to A and M. They're all fucking weird. <laughs> like that place was loud. Yeah, as shit. But for some odd reason, I don't know if it has to do with the acoustics or if the sound's just going straight up, I could hear the snap count fine. It was huh. like just loud ass cheering, like close to deafening, but then it, I just I could just hear the same the the like the faint oh my is that? And i yeah. Damn. It was, it was, I I don't know how it was, it was weird. <laughs> Why is Omaha so popular in football? Manning. Yep, Peyton Manning. Manning. Yeah, Peyton, Peyton Manning. Manning. So like, it's, but, but but so just because he said it, uh, it just depends on the OC too. It's just yeah. a common like I, I couldn't tell you why we did it, but right. I loved it. I just wondered. It was easy. That's a good question. Perhaps it's that. phonetics. I don't know. It maybe yeah. you know it. Yeah, it's easy to say. Yeah, it has like a, maybe it's like the number of vowels and like oh my. Maybe there's the psychology behind <laughs> oh, the word. Ma. Yeah, gives you know. time like to and then I can be like blue. It's like go. Oh. Yeah. I can like do a random short phrase word like that. Yeah, yeah. Short counts and all kinds of psychology to get a, a quicker snap or try to get somebody to jump. And you got to pick a word like because when we're when we're thinking of, like code words and stuff, there's a lot of words that we can't use because they may be spelled totally different, have totally different letters. But when you're yelling it, if the if the sh- shit, what do you call it? Like the, if the vowels or like the just. The sound of the word sounds anything like the other word we have. You can't use it. Yeah. yeah. Makes sense. And I think Omaha has like some very distinct oh, ma, ha. Yeah. To where like, you know, okay, once you're Omaha, okay, the ball's coming. Or like, that's the snap count. How much uh, shit talking is going on on the field during like in the like in the trenches? Like I say, because you, you, you it know, just depends. On you, the... You're the big uglies. Those guys, like you said, nobody nobody cares about you. <laughs> Literally, just the, I wasn't the shit talker in college unless I had to be. Uh-huh. And 
I'm still not now unless guy unless I need to be. Like I'd rather really be like the silent killer and just yeah. like stare nice. at you. Just play yeah. keep your mouth shut and Yeah. Yeah. But, but I mean I'm sure you, just, I'm sure you've been up against guys that that's, that's all they that's all that's they do that's all they do. Freaking talk and you just yeah. kinda smile just like <laughs> what are you gonna do? <laughs> you ever lined up? Or and it just depends on like the guy like in college, my when I was left tackle, my left guard, love him to death, Alex Redmond, he's with the Bengals now. He loved to talk and just start shit. And he would just do anything to get someone going. Sounds like somebody else on the road with us. You. You. No. Yes. Yeah, no. it's you. <laughs> Your mouth never stops. You talk You talk less on this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> when you're supposed to talk. It's your, no, it's your <laughs> show. No, it's great. You, you talk an appropriate amount, but like Bobby Keith's mouse can always running. He's that guy on your team that just I haven't seen that part of you. Oh wait, man, in the butt. <laughs> oh, at the God. end of the night, man, I like to. What was it? Not last night. The no, the night before. I don't know. One of those two nights, man. He was ornery. Just yeah. He just, asked me. He's like, he's asked me if I took if I sniffed some. Paint I was like, or would something. you been sniffing paint or something? I was like, he was just jawing on, at everybody. Like, hey, Nino. Hey, hey, hey. I thought you need to turn fix that TV. You know, you know oh, just, man. TV's still broke. Been, Thanks a lot. We've been in the Midwest for two weeks, <laughs> and our our satellite was frozen. <laughs> He can't, watch watch, he can't watch his um, his live PD. He gets he gets upset <laughs> he when he can't that? watch his live. PD. I like it every now and then. Yeah, I think it's good. It's a good falling asleep show. Yeah, he, see, he just uh, he just he's that like that Chihuahua that just yaps, just yaps and yaps and yaps and, y- and you're like, you just want to step on him. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> sometimes Josh does. That's why I can't have a small dog. I just know I'm going to kill it. Like, yeah. I'm either going to fall asleep with him and like roll over in my sleep and just grrr. Or I'm going to be like walking around not paying attention and like step on him while he's sleeping. Who knows? Yeah. Like I get like a big dog. You're, you're, you're like a, a Great Dane kind of guy. Too big? Not too big, just. Oh, they're great, man. You need one of those dogs the like great uh, the real big, the real big fluffy ones, those brown ones. I saw this a, like a chow. When I was with no, Buffalo, when I was with Buffalo. They had, did this like dog uh, photo shoot for like uh, shelter uh, dogs, and uh, each dog had a different NFL team on, it, and that's how they're gonna announce the, the schedule. And uh, this one dog named Zeus, like a mastiff, like that tiger fur, dark brown and gold, mm-hmm. and he had like one of these thick collars that said Zeus. And with a handle on the back, and I, I, I took a picture with him. I was like, "Yes, <laughs> no, you like bull mastiff." Is my dog? I, I, I have a mastiff at home. They're I almost awesome. adopted them. They are amazing. But dogs. I can't even take care of myself, so I don't need a dog. I want that. <laughs> what, what is, is that? that? I don't. It's uh, Matt Hack, the punter for the Dolphins. This is his dog. Oh, a golden <laughs> That's doodle. what you need. Yes. Oh, golden doodle. Yes. Uh, so, hey, Cody. How many guys have that one. Only, only uh, reason I would ever. I've had labs my whole life. Only reason I ever get that is just because they don't shed. No, Cody said he wants that. I want to hug that. <laughs> I want to hug that dog. So Matt, when you come out here, bring a dog. bring your dog, Matt. <laughs> next time we see you. I'm gonna get a German Shepherd and just like train him to like attack you and <laughs> bat you right in the balls, but not too hard. Just like to let you let him know just you're let there. You know, yeah. Like just the be like to hold the ducks. Like the ducks. Just say some dogs. German phrase. Just <laughs> watching you run. <laughs> well, maybe a great party trick. You know, just have the dog train to just come up and just barely grab, barely grab. Yes. You know. And just be like, just be like, oh, don't worry about him. He's fucking with you. He does that. He does that to everybody. Like the dogs. That- Have you seen Turner and Hooch? Yeah. Remember when he has like the guy by the neck? And he's like just kind of holding, waiting him, waiting for the uh, His command. Yeah, yeah, that kind of thing. That kind of thing. Yeah, I love it, totally. man. Do it. I'm fu- I mean, it like, I'm not coming to your house if you do. Yeah. No, I, hate, I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't either. <laughs> I no, won't. you train it to not do it to you. Then you'll be okay. Well, with my training style, I'll probably accidentally train the boots a minute too. No, we uh, it, it, you could do it just hard enough like the the duck hunting dogs that just barely they just hold barely the, grab yeah. that duck so they don't hurt it. They just pick it up and just bring it back. You know, yeah, get a big old lab, big old black there you lab, go. man. I've, I've had white labs my whole life. Yeah. Well, yeah, labs are great, man. Well, you know, um, I guess with you playing you playing uh football, you know, you don't hunt, you don't get to hunt much, right? I'm the, I can catch if we don't make the playoffs. I catch like the last two or three weeks of duck season. The past two years, all my my come back I'm like let's go hunting they're all like oh it's been horrible this year so I'm like I'm not, not going to go so I haven't gone in like two years yeah Cause this year I was like are we going hunting this week are we going hunting this week and they're like it's been so bad it's not it's too warm if you ever make it to Texas he's into it now man I, I, I didn't hunt for 15? last time I last time I deer hunted I was 17 with my grandfather last time I dove hunted I was probably 19 or 20 with my dad 
you know, so I'm, I'm almost 20 years removed from it. I went for the first time this year, and uh, we went duck hunting, man. And Where? Uh, Missouri. Southeast Missouri. In, uh, I think Dexter. We got to go together, because I'm trying to get back into it, too. Yeah, let's go, man. I've gone once or twice in the past 10 years. Hell yeah. Eight years. But even growing up, like, we go to a different farm every week, and we mostly just shot shit and drove around and drank beer. Yeah. yeah. yeah that's well, yeah. that's kind of what we... Went, yeah. went spotlight in the night. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's always a good time, too. Now they got those thermals. I mean, that's a game changer. The fuck? Oh, the, man. A thermal scope? Yeah. Jesus. They're expensive, but yeah. It's not fair. I prefer spotlighting. No, I mean, for, like, hogs, like, you know, varmints. At least they got stuff. a shot. <laughs> They, they can hear the truck coming. <laughs> hear Your pickup's too loud, Johnny. I told you to. I told you to fix those pipes. <laughs> Just backfires. <laughs> Who shot? Backfire. <laughs> oh Lord. Oh gosh. No, so yeah, we should go hunting. <laughs> I don't know if I want to go hunting with you anymore. <laughs> well, you guys have decided to do and then not do a lot of things in this last hour together. Yeah, uh, yeah. I'm not playing golf with him. That's uh, he's got a pretty mean shot. Learned that to top golf with you. Oh, so that that's, was a good time. That's top golf. That's different than golf. That's easier. Yeah. Well, I understand that, but we're hitting the ball like 120. You're hitting the net at three. Three fifty, whatever. Yeah, but you gotta realize how much, how, much, lucky. how much thinner those fairways are in golf than top golf. Oh, the, uh, the chances I actually hit the fairway. I mean, I've shot a legit eighty before, best round of my life. But that was when I was living in Scottsdale for a whole month and playing almost every day after working out. You have to play all the time. Oh, and when I almost gave up on golf, as like I always had the excuse, like, oh, I just don't have any time with college, like, cause didn't, no time off. And then once that first off season came, I'm like, I'm, <laughs> I'm playing every fucking Hell day yeah. after. I want to conquer this shit. Before I left for tra- that next training camp in July, between so the whole off season, I played a lot and I shot an eighty. And I w- went through season six months, came back, played in January, shot like a one ten, and yep. I'm like, fuck. Yep. This. Yep, yep. That was the closest I've ever gotten to giving up on golf. I still haven't had gotten the love to like play like I did that one off season just because I how am I that bad off of just six months off after all that work? Yeah, it was. I'd uh, it hurt. I'd play golf if I could shoot a one ten. <laughs> <laughs> this I, is true. I, I, <laughs> I'm more like a one thirty kind of guy. <laughs> And I really, I, right. I get, we gotta hunt together. We gotta play golf together. No, I can, I can, I can, I can pull a bird out of the sky, but I can't hit a golf ball. I'm the, I'm the guy in the blind that once everyone's shooting, I'm just like, that was me. Yeah. <laughs> my my uh, best friend growing up, they got a place in Paducah, Kentucky that we go to. Awesome, right next to Shelbyville Farms, one of like the best places. And he's got this huge blind, like four bays, and it could fit like fifteen, 10, probably ten people, and in the back through the door is a couch and like TV with full satellite and like a kitchen where you can like cook up some venison and elk for lunch. That sounds like Andrews. Yeah, it does. Damn. About as bougie as it gets for hunting, but yeah. Like, Hell yeah. Yep. it's unreal. Yeah. But the bay, I mean, the windows for, like, for shooting out of are so damn small. So like, I can't even aim. I'm like, I'm like <laughs> shoot like this. <laughs> where me and you would be fine. <laughs> well, I'd be fine. Oh, everyone else would be fine. And I felt like I was too short to so get So I just got to the point where I couldn't even, like, I could barely aim without getting my face, like, sticking out where my face is, like, right next to my buddy's muzzle. <laughs> so I just started just screaming every time, that was me, that was me, burn down. <laughs> I was like, everybody else is going, that motherfucker. Don't even get up from your chair. Brown. <laughs> you didn't shoot. <laughs> yeah. Where's your gun? <laughs> the, actually, the first time I forgot to turn the safety off, so I'm like, I go to shoot. I want to shoot. I'm like, shit. And by the time I get the safety on, everyone's done shooting. I go, bird down. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good lord, I love it. Cool. Those are some funny stories. Penis. Well, thanks for coming out, man. On your hour of sleep. <laughs> you say penis. <laughs> Keith, grow up. <laughs> Sorry, man. I don't know. I'm not ready. 
None of us are ready. No. I can't think of like one UCLA story. Yeah, one. Of course, when I try to, like. Nothing comes we, up. Yeah. I mean, we've had SWAT. After we beat SC, we burned couches on the streets, and like SWAT came and a helicopter came. It was pretty sweet with like riot shields. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, y'all enjoyed that. And then I passed out in the bush. <laughs> <laughs> My buddy had to carry, like, help me get home. I hope he was big. He, he still, How did he To this up? day, I probably came to a little bit. Oh. But to this day, he still, I hold over my head that he saved me from the SWAT. But That's, that's pretty good. Um, I've never had the SWAT. I've had guns pointed at me by cops, but. I never had guns pointed. We were usually cool with the cops. They would come, and, like, I knew most of their names. They'd be like, they'd be like, all right, you're going to help me shut this down? I'm like, all right, fine. It would, it would, it would get out of hand. And uh, you might have had a little grace. But when we, when we were good and rolling, like, 14, 15, and 13, like, when we beat SC, like, and then hadn't beat them, hadn't beat them in years, I'm 3-2 and two against him, no big deal. <laughs> but, uh, he, uh... We it, it would get it would get rowdy on campus. I bet it would, man. You how, probably how had far, some, like you said, you probably had some grace with. Yeah, like, I, I bet. Yeah, the cops with the football players and the. Oh yeah, as long as like we could be at a, any party, like doing whatever. But as long as like we weren't assholes, like we mostly knew all of them. Yeah. As long as like we weren't being assholes or starting fights and stuff, they were cool. Yeah. How far are the two campuses from each other? USC and UCLA. No traffic, 15 minutes, 20 minutes. No kidding. Big traffic, rip. 45 minutes an hour. Yeah. So, most so not far. No. Big rivalry. I'd probably say no traffic, 30 minutes. It's, I think, 10 miles. Wow. I'll be down. Burning couches. Awesome. SWAT team coming. SWAT team coming. <laughs> Look out. Here he comes. Well, all right. Well, thanks, man. Thanks for joining us. Looking thanks forward for to the me. night. Yeah, we're going to have some fun. Oh, yeah. All those shaking excited. hands over there with some stiffs. Yeah. Yeah, thanks. I got to <laughs> I gotta put my business hat on tonight. Yep. Go, I'm in Nashville. I gotta do. I gotta do business things. You know, it's part of being the country music singer thing. I'm working. Look yeah, at me. I know. Like, you're, <laughs> repping you're, the LC. You're, you're, you're in your element. <laughs> I've, I've got my old man socks on. I've got shorts on. I look like I should have like penny loafers. Uh, yeah, repping my my OC buddies. The wrestling. My wrestling shirt. <laughs> Mania. Um, Mania. We went Raw. to. We went to uh, Royal Rumble. We went to the Royal Rumble not long ago in January. Yeah. Yeah. Really? Oh, dude, yeah. it was sick. When uh, McIntyre won? Yes. Yes. Dude, I, was, I was watching that on TV. Yeah, dude, we took uh, awesome. Cody's son. Dude, I haven't, I haven't w- watched wrestling since, like, years. It's coming back, dude. It's huge. It's coming back. Yeah. I didn't realize that. Big, one of my best friends I've gotten to know over a couple of years. Yeah. Past couple of years, Cliff, he he loves it. Lives in, like, we went to SmackDown. I think it was SmackDown. Maybe it was Raw in Nashville two years ago. Yeah. I haven't been that drunk in an event in years. And we were like. <laughs> Did you get I a bought, belt and everything? Oh, yeah. We got like a John Cena wristbands and stuff. And like, we were tackling Hell each other in the yeah. Bridgestone Arena lobby and like doing wrestling moves. It was awesome. <laughs> Oh, it's so much fun. It, it really does, man. It brings out, because, you know, guys, when I was a kid, you know, obviously Hulk and, and Jake the Snake, who I got to meet one time, and he was super really? cool. Uh, just, you know, the Von Erichs, that and that, that's who, going way back. Who's you know? the guy that came back at uh, Edge? Edge. Edge. Oh, dude. dude that, 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 I forgot. That pumped me up. Edge that stadium knocked, uh, went crazy, Edge knocked man. AJ Styles out with a, a spear, that, and AJ really uh, fucked his shoulder up. Yeah, he was really hurt. He was uh, hurt. Yeah, he uh, he didn't do it on purpose, obviously. But yeah, yeah, but yeah that, that it was great, man. I don't know how Edge can still do that after all those. Ba- yeah, the next surgeries. he's had so yeah. many surgeries, but dude, he he came out and rolling. Josh dude, had never been when they he put his music it. on. Everyone just immediately went. I'm like, yeah, oh, dude, I'm like, yeah. I'm like, do these diehard fans know the music to their people Hell that much? Yeah, they do. <laughs> it's like, they didn't even have to look right when the song came on. They just go. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> one, that one guy in the crowd was like, "Oh my god!" Yeah, yeah. yeah well, if we, if like, so me, Josh, Cody, and Cody's son went, and uh, if we didn't know the music, you'd look over at Cody's son, Larson, and be like, "Hey, man, who is this?" And he, oh, he would know. Oh, my son's in it, man. So, yeah, oh, yeah, he's, he he's seven. Every, he do every. I gotta give him a Jets hat. You do Screw that Buffalo hat. You do. I, I know because you gave. He still has that, he Buffalo, still has hat that Buffalo hat hanging up in his room, room. hanging. And he wears it, but uh, no, I have to, I have to, have to get him a Jets hat. I got you. And then I'll he'll be, it. and then, and then he'll be like, Dad, I think I'm a Jets fan now. Yeah. Because uh, <laughs> I don't know. Right now, he's a Vikings fan. He's a Vikings fan. He so loves. My brother used to be there. He lo- yeah, yeah. He loves Stefan Diggs. Well, cool. Well, hey, man, Connor McDermott, thank you again for uh, being here. A couple in. I know you're tired. Your big uh, Hawaii trip and all that. So go get some rest, buddy. You got a big night tonight. Big night at the Preds game. I'm you know, I might as well just stay up. If I go back to sleep, I'm not. I'm not getting up. We should go do some shopping at Lululemon. Dude, I don't need to do more shopping. I see. <laughs>
I want to go pay my Hawaiian, uh, the Four Seasons bill in Hawaii. And they're like, your car's not working. I'm like, call my bank. They're like, yeah, you hit your monthly limit. I'm like, fuck. Oh, <laughs> shit. That's a, that's a horrible feeling. <laughs> the worst. <clears throat> Boy, while, while you're in Hawaii, too? Yeah. Well, oh, or wherever? They, they paid for like 90, my, I was able to pay for 90% of it, but there was like an extra $500 left. Mm. And they're like, I call the bank. They're like, uh, yeah, your monthly limit is, uh, is hit. I'm like, I didn't bring any other card with me. Just my Amex. Mm. And so I go to my buddy. And I was like, can I buy your card real quick? I'll pay you. I'll Venmo you. <laughs> Man, it's a horrible feeling. I, I I carry two cards. I have my personal card and my business card. And I had to stop using. I have to use my business card when we're on the road all the time because they know I'm going to be on the road all the time. Because if I try to use my personal card up here, it's going to decline. And I you learned should that- hear the phone calls that Chase gets. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> They're awesome. When he's on with customer service. I just here it is the person making uh, oh Chase walk, Bank I was like who's Chase oh yeah. sorry yeah I yeah. walk out because I just start to feel uncomfortable for them <laughs> like I, I feel I start feeling hey, bad you know when they have yeah it's you, the person, I, bet, I bet the guy that's like works for like for customer service just sees Jinx he's like oh fuck well and, and basically <laughs> pass you know when that, you hear that thing that says this call may be monitored for training or, or, yeah or, right or whatever training customer, purposes training purposes yeah. they're like alright listen to this one listen to how this guy is talking this is how you should respond because like i'm definitely the guy that's motherfuckering them <laughs> you know have you ever had a guy just like i you you get you get his tipping point he's like unleashes on you um i have like, i've had them it's like a little i've had them okay, where are you I'm where are you go going uh-uh yeah no don't you, do that you need to quit josh is going to smoke i haven't smoked in seven months thank you no I big thought, deal i thought we were done we are oh okay. yeah we're just whoa wait, wait, come here come here come here sit down real quick <laughs> Wait, I'm, wait! I never get to see you. Yeah, and he he was even late. He didn't even make the whole. Yeah, thing. he got he, man. He just he just came in here, asked his questions, and then left. got out. Yeah, no, but uh, you know, it's the person that's making ten bucks an hour, just getting call railed. center. Well, he worked at a, Josh worked at a call center, man, and, and he said that he would he would intentionally like change his voice. To deal with, like, if he heard, like, this redneck guy call in, like, yeah, like, turn my cell phone off. And Josh was like, well, sir, let me see what I can do for you. Let me, you know. I mean, if I had to answer calls all day, I'd make different voices. <laughs> and he said, it depends on depends on who calls in, man. Depends, you know, you try to, if it's a little old lady, oh, yes, ma'am. Oh, okay, I understand. Um, let me see what I can do for you. Because even if he's not going to do shit, he's still concerned. He's, he sounds concerned. <laughs> it's I was awesome. like, I was like, like when I was in Hawaii, like, I wanted to call him, be like, man, like, why's my, why's my car not fucking working? And then when he said, uh, had a little attitude when I called, and he was like, uh, well, you hit your max, uh, monthly max. I was like, I just to- get, went totally embarrassed. I was like, oh, can't get mad at that. Yeah. <laughs> and here it is. Uh, you still got ten more days or eleven days because it's leap year. I know. I might have. I gotta check it out because like, I don't know how I spend that. Like you need to, need to think about raising your max. Yeah, but that'd be dangerous. Because <laughs> then my that it's almost good because then I know I don't realize like how much I need I'll to spend. stop spending. This is my I need to stop spending money limit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it just sucks. Like my debit card had fraud on it. My other credit card had fraud. On it, so I haven't got those back yet. Oh man! It's like we've gone through that so much in the last probably five years, oh, man. It's been taking them forever to send me a new car, and they will send it to like the wrong address or something, and then it's just well. And you know, people that are assumed to have larger bank accounts seems seems we get hit a lot, a little more often. I guess I don't know. It's like <laughs> no. it's like there ain't that much fucking money in my fucking bank account, man. <laughs> Hack away, see what oh. you can find. I get one of those chase fraud alerts probably. Once a month, and then like when it's like something for like thirty bucks, you're like, am I gonna get a new credit card over thirty bucks? Probably, but you don't stuff. know if they still have it, still run. It. That's that's the guessing be, game. I mean, I'd like, what do you do? Yep, you either do or you don't. Well, you know what? Thirty dollars might have just been a tester for them. Like, okay, if this thirty dollars works, I'm gonna go for two hundred. See, I don't yeah. think about that much length. So yeah, yeah that's right. Rock and roll, man. Thanks for coming, man. <laughs> <laughs>